88% of all millionaires do this at least 30 minutes a day. And we do too. In a minute, we'll tell you what that is. We're talking, of course, about reading. We're going to give you five <laughs> reasons why reading is such a good habit to have. And then we're going to swing right into what we know you want to know, and that is how reading can be a frugal habit. We have 10 ways that you can get books on the cheap or for free. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you my current reading pile of books all about finances and a financial mindset. Hey, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. Every week we come to you on Monday on YouTube and we drop a new video about how to live with a spirit of joy and abundance on a shoestring budget. We know a thing or two about living on a budget because we raised our four sons debt free on an income which was consistently under the U.S. national average income. So reading. Why is reading such a great idea? Well, one of the things that it does is it, it actually engages the brain. It improves long-term memory as well as short-term memory. All right, so it's good for your brain. The second reason why reading is such a good idea is that it increases your knowledge base. Now, right before we went live, I actually created in about 20 minutes, I thought, what all have I learned from reading, all right? So this is all about money here in the center. And these are all different topics that I have explored at our public library related to reading. So let's take a sec and take an up close look at this chart. So we start here with money. Money is in the center of the graph. And then everything over here in blue is related to finances. Um, I, I, I read about business finances, about money mindset, starting a small business, marketing. And then we move over here. You can also branch off into economics, personal finance. I've read about cutting expenses, which of course doesn't surprise you, uh, budgeting, personality theory. It's why we spend the way we spend and why we feel the way that we feel about money. Um, and then down here on the lower part, you'll see self-sufficiency, okay? The minute you start reading about saving money, you start learning about self-sufficiency, about green living, about how to reduce energy costs, and about DIY projects. And then all the way over here, another branch is also food. Um, I read, as you might imagine, a lot about cooking, gardening. I've read about square foot gardening. We had a quite successful square foot garden at the old house. Uh, shopping strategies, couponing, and also nutrition. So you can see it's like a spider web of all of these areas that sparked an interest in me when I simply started looking at books in the library system about money. The third thing that reading does is that it increases your vocabulary. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I've actually done a little bit of research on this. For those of you with really young children, there are physical synapses in the brain when your child is born. And those synapses grow and they connect as you do one thing. Read aloud to that child. So reading aloud is incredibly important for young children children. I will tell you how this is played out in our own lives. We have educated our children at home for 20 years. I've never done just a vocabulary unit with any of our boys. Instead, from a very young age, I read aloud to them every single day. And without a fail, all four boys have scored consistently in the top 97 to 98th percentile nationwide on standardized tests in the vocabulary section. So reading aloud, especially to your children, is incredibly important. You know, I've got a, an interesting story. When our oldest son was four years old, we took him out on a little day excursion. It was about 75 miles from our house, a little place called New Salem. It's uh, where Lincoln was a young man. 
And so we drove, it took about an hour and a half to get there. And when we arrived, we were setting up our food on the picnic table, and James exclaims to Hope and I, that was a very, very long journey. And I'm like, wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a million dollar word for a four-year-old. And once again, that was because Hope and I read to him. Now here's the final thing that reading does for you. Reading actually relaxes you and it helps you to sleep better. This is why experts will tell you if you are having trouble getting to sleep, what is the first thing they tell you to do? Read War and Peace. No, they tell you <laughs> to read a book, any book. They tell you to go ahead, get up, and read a book. What's the one thing they absolutely tell you not to do? Well, you don't want to be looking at an LCD screen right before going to bed because that tells your brain that it's morning, the sun's coming out, it's bright, and it actually activates your awake cycle. There you go. So if you're having trouble sleeping, read a good book. Those are the actual advantages to reading. But now let's get into the nitty gritty. It's the stuff that we know you have been waiting for. How in the world can you indulge this love of reading without spending an arm and a leg? And we're going to give you 10 ways that you can do that. All right, so number one. Well, the first one is obviously go to your public library. They offer thousands of free books. And if your library is like ours, it also has an interloan system where you can borrow a book from a nearby library that your local library may not have. Now, here's a way that you can read online for no cost. And we're going to actually be giving you some websites during this uh, video. I don't want you to have to worry about trying to take notes while you watch. If you look in the description of this video, all of the websites that we actually reference, I'm going to have links to them right in the description of the video so you won't have to try to write them down as you're watching. Overdrive.com. Overdrive.com allows you to borrow versions of a book uh, using your public library card. So if your library offers Overdrive.com, you're going to find that probably on your local library website. and You'll be able to hook right up to it and borrow using your public library card. For some brand new editions, newly to be published, you can also be a book reviewer and hope you've had an experience doing that. I do. I've done this like a couple of different times. Um, I actually, Chris Hogan's book on millionaires, I was one of the reviewers for that book. So before it was released, I received a pre-release copy of the book and I was able to write a nice review for him, um, for him to use for like publicizing the book. And then I also wrote a review and put it on Amazon for him. And then I also did the same thing with uh, Dave Ramsey's daughter, Rachel Cruz, when she came out, not with this most recent book, with the, but with the book before that she wrote just a few years ago. I was one of the reviewers for that book. Now, some book review agencies will actually pay you to review books, but if you just love to read, then you can also do that for free. So volunteer to review people's books. The next thing you can do is join a book rewards club. Now, Hope, how does that work? Now, I actually am involved in a couple of rewards clubs, so I'm just going to read it off of my cheat sheet here and tell you exactly where to go. So a couple of these reward clubs. Now, this is for Nav Press and Tyndale uh, publishers. So those are Christian book publishers. They have a My Reader Rewards Club where you can read books, review them, they give you like a certain number of things you can do every month to gain points. And as you gain points, you can actually request free books. So this is a great way to get brand new free books. And like getting points is actually pretty easy to do with the book club. And um, so like some of it is like post this on social media, share this, um, invite someone else to join the book club, things like that. And you are going to take a survey. So you're going to accrue book club points and you can turn them in for absolutely free brand new books from Tyndale or Nav Press. And I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. Now, the second 
uh, book club that I actually belong to is you can review books for master books. Now, this is once again a Christian book website, and I used master books um, pretty extensively in my early days of homeschooling. So, if you're a homeschooler, you're probably familiar with master books. The great thing about master books is once you get on their um, on their list, on their subscriber list. They send out a weekly newsletter and they have a certain number of books that are really reduced to rock bottom prices. But when you review products that they offer, you receive money towards your next purchase, which means if you are purchasing those ultra low cost products, you can get an awful lot of items for next to nothing. Uh, the next thing that you can do is look for a free rack at your local bookstore. Now, this would probably be a used bookstore. We have one in town that actually sets out an entire table outside of their store. And they allow you to just take the books off the table, pick from whatever you want, and they're all free. Guys, you know what the best thing about this is? That bookstore is literally on the way to me taking our 16-year-old to work. So as you might imagine, like on my way back home, I'm like whipping in to look at the free book table every time I take him to work. It is so much fun. We're going to show you actually my current book reads. There's a couple of examples of books I've actually grabbed off of that free book table. Awesome. And we've gotten some good books that way. Yeah, we have. It's a lot of fun. And we actually, so you know, we do support her business and we actually do purchase books from her. Local used bookstores are a great way to get material that you want to read for a discounted price. Often, they will actually purchase your books and you could use actually <clears throat> the money that they purchase your books for, you can use that to purchase items in their bookstore. And usually the, the rule of thumb is if they give you cash, it will be less than in-store credit. So if you want to like maximize the books that you're trading in, you take it in in-store credit and then you can use that money toward books that you're purchasing from them. Uh, another idea is that you can form a book exchange with some of your close friends. I'm sure a lot of your friends probably have like-minded material that you would like to read, and you probably have some books that they don't have in their library. So it's a real good idea maybe to get together with them and see what, what they might offer to exchange for what you have. Now, a funny story about that is one of the books that we loaned to one of our really good dear friends, we, we were in a bookstore looking through books and it was a title that I had forgotten about. And I, I pulled the book out and there it is. There was my name in it uh, where I had originally purchased the book and they had forgotten about it and they turned it into the bookstore. But it, we got yeah. a laugh out of that. So he actually repurchased the book. Yep. He liked it so much. He's like, I'm going to spend my three bucks and I'm going to repurchase my own book and then I'm going to call them and give them a really hard time for accidentally oh, we had a great... <laughs> taking my book to a used bookstore. We so, had a good yeah. laugh with them. We did. We did. They're really longtime funny. friends and we laughed about it. All right. The next thing. Uh, I don't know about your area, but in our area, we have several of these and they're, they're little free libraries. Yes. So this might be like a, a small cabinet that might have two shelves worth of books in it and it'll just see, say free. And it's a place where you can drop books off that you don't want, that you might want to share with other people. And it'll also have a reservoir of books uh, that are offered for free. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing. On the end of one of our bike rides uh, in a local town here, there's one of those uh, little libraries. And we'll always stop and look and see what they have to offer. Yeah, so it's the whole idea is give a book, take a book. Mm -hmm. So you take a book that you might like to read and then you drop one off that you're done reading and then someone else gets the opportunity to take that book. Love little free libraries. Fun. All right, next way. Uh, the next thing to do is, of course, read books online. And there's a lot of books that, uh, for, for instance, are on Google that are free. Uh, they might be older books that uh, the copyrights have expired. But there's some very interesting books that you can just read online for free. Some of them you can download as a PDF file. Yeah. Other than Google Books, which has a lot of free books available, we're going to give you a list of some other websites that you can check out. So the next place that you can look is Gutenberg.org. Um, Project Gutenberg is a repository for out-of-print books. There's no longer a copyright law associated with it, so they are free to publish it, and you can download those from a PDF, or you can just read it online at Project Gutenberg. I've actually used several of their books. Uh, ManyBooks.net 
works very much the same way. There's a variety of books from authors of different genres that are available through manybooks.net and also obooko.com. I don't know where the name of that website came from, but I kind of like to say it, <laughs> obooko. <laughs> and once again, we'll have links to all these uh, websites in the description of the video. So free ways to read books online. Uh, and then the tenth way, which we actually find kind of interesting, is Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Now, this is for those of you who have young, young children. Dolly Parton um, is admirable for so many different reasons, one of which is she is absolutely invested in helping children develop a love of learning to read and a love of reading. So she actually has... Um, a place where you can go online and request a free book every month uh, your child mm -hmm. signs up and between the ages of one and five, uh, they receive a book once a month from Dolly and it's from the Imagination uh, Library. And uh, you can check that out. We've got the website available. Okay. All right. And those are 10 ways that you can get books for free or at a very, very reduced cost cost. Now, what we've been waiting for. I am going to show you the current financial books that I am reading. And these either have to do directly with finances or they have to do with an area of a financial mindset. So this is what is on my current pile. I actually just got this book. It's called Go Green and Live Rich. It's by David Bach. And I actually have read several of his other books on finances and found them to be very interesting and very easy to understand. Uh, this book specifically is about ways that going green can actually save us green and put more money in our pocket. It's good for us and good for the environment. I got this on the free shelf of that bookshop that we showed you. And uh, I'm actually maybe going to do a video on this and I'll give you some of the ideas that I glean from this book after I get it right because I think it's very interesting. This is called The Iconist, all right? This is actually a business book and explains how large companies have actually made themselves completely and utterly recognizable through their icons and the way that they do their marketing. For instance, if you see the symbol associated with Coke, you don't even have to see the words Coke. All you have to do is see the symbol and you immediately know that it's Coke or it's Pepsi or it's Mountain Dew. You know through the symbol. So this is the whole idea of making yourself a niche and uh, carving out a name for yourself by the way that you represent your company. And I think that's very interesting. The third one is Wired That Way. This is a book about um, the psychology of the way that we act, why we act that way, why we spend money the way we spend money, and why we feel about money the way that we feel about money. So it deals with various areas of your life, but it talks about your personality and why you are wired the way you are wired. I'd love to just really think about deeply about why people do the things they do. Here's another book. This is Atomic Habits. It's actually super popular right now, and I would love to know if you have read this book and if you have what your opinion of it is. I borrowed it from the public library, and I tell you how enthralled I was with the whole idea of this book because I was ready to lay down my own cold, hard cash on Amazon to buy my own copy. That's how much I liked this book. But as fate would have it, I actually won a copy from Trina Little. Now, I'm going to tell you who Trina is. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this book. The whole idea of this book is that changes in our life can happen, big changes through a series of small changes and small ideas that we actually, when we implement them over a period of time, will actually change the trajectory of your life. And I'm really, really interested in the topic of this book. Now, how I won a free copy. Um, Trina Little is a YouTube strategist. If you're unfamiliar with her, go check out her channel, Tips with Trina. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. We are actually currently taking a course with Trina and we absolutely love it. Well, Trina has an absolutely free three-day summit coming up. It's called Video Reframed, and it's a free 
three-day summit that will take place on the 23rd through the 25th of February. And it is especially for female entrepreneurs. And it's about entrepreneurs that really want to do video and do it well. So if you want information on that summit, head over to Tips with Trina and you will be able to find that. And through signing up for the summit, I actually entered a challenge and I won the challenge and Trina is sending me a copy of this book. The next book in the pile is this. John Maxwell is absolutely brilliant at your mindset and how to train your mind in order to reach great, big, seemingly impossible goals. He's incredibly encouraging. And I got this book from a, a thrift shop here in town. So it's called Intentional Living, Choosing a Life That Matters. I'm all about making certain that my mindset is where it needs to be so that I can reach goals. And then this is the final book. I actually won this book also. The author's name is Katie Horner. It's called In Spite of Myself, How Intentional Praise Can Transform Your Heart and Your Home. And this book is incredibly and encouraging. Those are the books that are on my current read pile right now. We would love to know what is on your read pile. What authors are you fascinated with right now? What books and what do you think that we should read next? As always, we love to hear your thoughts in the comments section of this video. Listen, Reading is a great habit to have, but if you want to know 11 other daily frugal habits that we do, we actually did a video on it, and you'll find a link right over there on that side of the screen. The third thing that reading does is that it increases your vocabulary. Okay, you want to try and try that again, then I'm gonna... Go ahead. You got something to say about it? Say it! The third thing that reading does is that it increases your vocabulary. One of the things that I've noticed is that as I read, I pick up the words that I'm, you know, that I'm uh, reading as I read. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs>